Okay, I'll click this. Click on the, that button, right. Don't worry, everybody's a little nervous the first time. <laughs> so why don't you go get an atom. Now click on the first one, the lower one. Excellent. Okay, you've got the atom. Now try dragging it out to the center of the image. It's a miracle! Yes! <laughs> We still experience something that I call the boggle factor. The most hardened atom mover will be sitting at the computer terminal, moving atoms, building some structure, doing some experiment. And in the middle of moving an atom, you sort of freeze. You get boggled. What hits you is the enormity of what you're doing, that you're taking an atom of your choice and moving it from here to there, building something on the atomic scale. That is so far beyond what we could have conceived of doing 10 years ago. Don Eigler is the first man to move an atom. He did it in 1991 in IBM's Almaden Research Center. Naturally, the first thing he and his colleagues did was spell out IBM. This is a serious matter to IBM because a future generation of computer circuits will be the width of an atom, such as this wire being built with gold atoms at the University of North Carolina. And it means we could build DNA one gene at a time. Building on Eigler's work, the university has developed this device to play with DNA. These are chromosome particles used in gene therapy. For the first time, gene splicers are able to see what they're splicing. One of the great things about working with this apparatus and with moving atoms around is we've been able to look at aspects of nature no one's seen before. UNC's Pixel Photographics computer visualizes what's going on, while a researcher manipulates molecules with a force feedback device. That's right, he can feel the atoms. Here, a virus is being swept along by a virtual whisk broom. The project uses a desktop atomic force microscope. Eigler uses a custom-built industrial strength atom mover called a scanning tunneling microscope, which reads a surface like Braille. This is the scanning tunneling microscope. All of this ends up way down below as the tip of a needle, which has an electric current running through it. That can send back a very accurate picture of a surface as the needle passes over it. But more than that, it has the power to attract and pull along a single atom on that surface. It's awesome. This is what the microscope shows on your computer screen. The things that look like eggs are atoms. The dark parts are the shadows of the atoms. See these two atoms right there? Those appear to be particularly juicy atoms, and so I think we might try to move those. Eigler has written a program that enables anyone to sit down and use a virtual reality glove or a mouse or this pointer to click and drag an atom like some computer file. You place a purple crosshair on the atom of your choice, click and drag and drop. Easy. I can grab any atom I want and just haul it along. So. <laughs> the power trip. Here comes the power trip, right? Let me try to move this again. Have you got a driver's license for this? <laughs> you know, in another hour, I'll be dangerous. I know. I think you're dangerous already. <laughs> We happen to be moving manganese atoms on a metal surface, but Eigler uses the atoms that make up water, too, and carbon dioxide. IBM wants to know how electrons misbehave under unusual conditions, so Eigler rounded up atoms into a quantum corral. You'll never see this in nature. Why are you personally doing this? What do you get out of this? Boatloads of fun. <laughs> There's a lot of different ways to earn a living. I really enjoy doing science research. For me, there's a tremendous joy in doing that. Part of that is the process of doing that, but the real joy comes in the process of discovery and learning new things about the natural world that weren't known before. There's a tremendous excitement in doing that. <laughs> Best video game in town, yeah? This is better than any video game you will ever play. Don has programmed his machine to use sound feedback so well that blind people have used it to move atoms. By the way, the University of North Carolina nano manipulator can also be used as the world's tiniest little welder, so you might want to try that. <laughs>